Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Max with Buzz Talks here and I'm back with a Sansa Stark prediction video. In this video, I'm going to go episode by episode and break down what's going to happen to Sansa Stark in Game of Thrones Season 7. And in this season, Sansa's going to be in a really bitter place. She ended up winning Battle of the Bastards by bringing in the Vale. But then Jon Snow ends up getting all the credit and is seated as King in the North. And she may be proud for her brother, but at the same time, she is still very bitter and she feels like she should be Queen in the North. And Littlefinger agreed with her. But Sansa has come to terms and she knows where her and Littlefinger stand. She knows that he wants to be on the throne and that he wants her by his side. But she's not interested in that relationship. So this season will really flesh out where they go next. And that takes us to episode 1. And in episode 1 we're going to see a big scene at the Great Hall at Winterfell. And it's going to be a council between all of the noble houses. And the drama is going to be focused in on all the noble houses who didn't support Jon and battle the bastards. And that includes House Karstark and House Umber. And the focus of this debate is going to focus on two characters, Aelys Karstark and a young boy who is an Umber. And in this scene, we're really going to see the difference between Sansa and Jon as leaders. Sansa wants to eliminate the family houses who are loyal to Ramsay, because she wants to inspire devotion to everyone who followed them in Battle of the Bastards. She wants to disapprove of betrayal. And she also wants to use their lands and reward other family houses that have been loyal to them. But Jon disagrees and he wants to pardon them because he doesn't want to pull children from their homes. John really stands by the belief that he wants to return Winterfell to its former glory. And we're going to see that there's certain characters like Lyanna Marmot that are going to agree with Sansa. But John is going to stop the debate and say that Aelys Karstark will now command Carhold. But John is going to move on and stress the issues that actually matter. He's going to talk about the Long Night and the White Walker threat. He's going to state that Dragonglass kills White Walkers and now it's more valuable than gold. And we're going to see feedback between Tormund, Brienne, Sansa, Davos, and Lady Marmont on what to do next. And we're going to see that Davos suggests to go to Dragonstone. He says that he was there when he was supporting Stannis, and that it is full of dragonglass. So the council comes to the conclusion that Jon must go to Dragonstone with Davos to try and get dragonglass before the White Walkers march south. But then in another scene, we're going to get a heated discussion between Jon and Sansa, and it's pretty much them going to be discussing politics. We're going to really see the differences in their opinions. Sansa's going to tell Jon that she thinks that he's making a big mistake in giving the lands back to the people who betrayed them. And she tells Jon that he's going to have to fix his reputation and he doesn't think about certain things. Jon is viewed as a bastard and a wildling lover. But Jon's going to interrupt her and say that he doesn't care what he is. But she's going to continue on and say that Jon needs to inspire followers. And she tells him that he can't do that if he's ignoring his counsel and rewarding betrayers. But in episode 2, we're going to see this conflict mold over. Jon is going to be sitting at the weirwood tree, sharpening his long claw with Ghost by his side. And she's going to come forward and apologize about the conflict that they had and say that Jon was right. But Sansa's going to be lying. She's just going to want to build her relationship with her brother. But she's going to bring up the conversation they had earlier about trusting each other. So she tells Jon about a conversation she had with Littlefinger. And she tells him that Littlefinger does not want him in power. And that Littlefinger feels like Jon has nobody to rally behind him. And she tells him that Littlefinger thinks that nobody will rally behind Jon because he's a bastard and a wildling lover. And Sansa's really using this information to discredit Jon. Jon is honorable enough where if he feels like he's hurting the North, he may step down as King in the North. Because Sansa feels like she could be a better ruler than Jon. But then Sansa has something to give Jon, and that's a letter from Daenerys. Jon ends up reading it, and the letter is actually summoning all of the Lords of Westeros to swear fealty to her. So Jon tells Sansa that he has to go there to get Dragonglass. And Jon tells her that he will not swear fealty because he doesn't know if she's crazy like her father. And with this statement we see Sansa get noticeably irritated because she herself would have sworn fealty to Daenerys. But then throughout the episode we're going to get the groundwork of even more politics. We're going to see Littlefinger talk to Jon in the crypts of Winterfell. And Littlefinger's motive is to push Jon out of King in the North so someone else can seat there. And we're going to see Jon gather a force of Stark men with Davos. And he's going to be leaving Sansa in his stead as he leaves to Dragonstone. And Tormund is going to be left behind to represent the Free Folk. But as Jon rides away, Sansa's going to have a scene with Littlefinger. And he's going to tell her that now she has a huge opportunity to prove her worth to the Northerners. To prove that she truly is the rightful ruler of the North. And Littlefinger suggests that she can revoke some of Jon's orders. And he hints at the Wildlings being a threat to Winterfell rallying allies. Littlefinger tells her that the Vale may cut support to Winterfell because they are associated with Wildlings. And it would also be hard to support a king who is a bastard and has no claim to this seat at all. But Sansa doesn't retaliate and just lets Littlefinger talk. And this takes us to episode 3. And in episode 3, Sansa's going to receive a raven from Queen Cersei. 
and she's going to open the letter and find out that it's for Littlefinger. And earlier in the season, the Lannisters are actually going to take over Highgarden, and they end up capturing Lady Olenna, and Lady Olenna gives them all of the intel that her and Littlefinger formed an alliance to assassinate King Joffrey. And Cersei finds out of this information because of Jaime, and this letter states that Littlefinger has been denounced of all titles, and he is no longer the Lord of Harrenhal. So we will see Sansa deliver this message to Littlefinger, and she's going to hint at him and say that he doesn't have as much control over the Vale as he thought. But then Bran is going to arrive at Winterfell, and Sansa and Bran are going to share a scene. They're going to be catching up and sharing information of their past. And Bran is going to fill her in on his information and what he's learned about Jon Snow and his parentage. And Sansa is going to tell him about her story of survival. But after this, Sansa is going to share a scene with Tormund. And what she wants is she wants to force the Wildlings to unite all of the North together before the Long Night comes. And it's also a political move because she wants to get them out of Winterfell. She ends up talking to Tormund and tells him that he must take all the wildlings to retake the Dread Fort from the remaining Bolton army, if there are any. And obviously Tormund's going to say she doesn't rule them, they're wildlings, they don't kneel to anybody. But she's going to remind him that he's in her land eating her food and taking up her space. And that she's sacrificing a lot to have the wildlings in Winterfell. But she promises that if the wildlings secure the Dread Fort, that they will own it. And it will play as a great shelter when the winter comes. So Sansa tells him that he will be traveling with Brienne and some Karstark bannermen because they will be escorting Lady Karstark to Carhold. And Tormon agrees, especially now that Brienne is coming. And this group heads to the Dreadfort to take it over for Sansa. And finally, Sansa is going to share another scene with Bran. Bran is going to tell Sansa that Littlefinger talked to him. And Bran was telling her that Littlefinger was saying that the Lords of Westeros would most likely rally behind the Wise Wolf rather than the White One tells her it was obvious that Littlefinger doesn't want Jon in power, and he tells Sansa that Littlefinger still wants her by his side. And this information will kind of shock Sansa and prove the validity of Bran's ability, because Sansa wouldn't have shared this private information of her and Littlefinger, and his confession that he wants to be on the Iron Throne with her by his side. But then Bran will go on to tell her that Littlefinger is extremely dangerous, and he cannot be around when the Long Night comes. He expresses that Littlefinger will do anything to push his motive, and that he is actually at fault for killing Jon Arryn and starting the War for the Five Kings. And he also betrayed their father, Ned Stark. So Bran tells her that she must outmaneuver him on any way that she can. And that Bran is going to be working on a way to bring him down. But then episode 4 is going to be extremely brief because a huge battle scene is going to be taking place. But in Winterfell, we're going to see Arya finally arrive. And she's going to be greeted by Bran and Sansa. And we are going to be getting yet another catch-up scene between the three siblings. We're going to see a connection between Sansa and Arya, and they're going to be discussing their different ways and how they survived. And we're going to see how that has shaped them to the characters that they've become today. And after this conversation, we're going to see Sansa send Jon a letter, letting him know that Bran and Arya have finally arrived at Winterfell. But then in episode 5, we're finally going to see Sansa start to come into her own. She's going to approach Littlefinger and tell him that he's no longer a lord. And she tells him that it was inevitable that his plan would backfire eventually, almost taunting him. And Littlefinger ends up agreeing... And Sansa reminds him that eventually he won't have control over Robin, because the Robin will soon leave the nest, and Littlefinger isn't even a lord in the Vale anymore. So Sansa proposes Littlefinger an option. She offers the possibility of Littlefinger to be a lord again. He gets all of the titles and the benefits of being a lord, and she promises that she will give him the Dreadfort, which is going to be taken over soon by Wildlings and Karstark Bannermen. But she will provide this to Littlefinger if he gets Robin to marry Arya. Sansa will tell Littlefinger that she can't rely on Littlefinger anymore to keep her alliance alive with the Vale, and that she doesn't trust her crazy cousin. So for this reason, she must have a Stark in the Vale. And she tells him after they secure this alliance, they will go down to the Riverlands and they will put it back in Tully control. And she tells him that if her demands are not met, then he will never be Lord of the Dreadfort, and his name will fade into nothing. Some are going to get a side scene of Littlefinger and Arya, and he's pretty much going to try and pit the sisters against each other. And he's trying to strategically do this because he projects that Arya is going to be moving to the Vale to marry Robin. But then because of this scene, Arya is going to approach Sansa. And she's going to tell him that she had a conversation with Littlefinger and that he was trying to put the sisters against each other. Using a letter that Sansa wrote to their brother Rob Stark. So then Arya is going to tell her a story of how she was cupbearer to Tywin Lannister. And that Littlefinger was there with Tywin, planning their mutual interest to have Robb Stark killed. But then Sansa cuts her off and tells her not to worry, and that they're siblings and that they have to band together. 
And Sansa promises Arya that she always has her back no matter what, and she tells Arya to go talk to Bran. So in the scene between Bran and Arya, Bran is really going to break down what's been going on with Littlefinger and how he betrayed their family. And he's going to find a piece of evidence in history that would prove that he is guilty, and that is a Valyrian steel dagger. So he sends Arya on a mission to find this dagger. And that takes us to episode 7 where Arya ends up finding this dagger, and she brings it to Sansa. And to Sansa's surprise, the dagger is exactly how Bran described it, so naturally she gets emotional. Because it proves that everything Bran has been saying is true. So before Sansa accuses Littlefinger of all of his crimes, she goes and talks to him. And she asks him about the deal they made and if he's made any work on it. And he tells Sansa that he has talked to Robin of the Vale. And Littlefinger says that with his shared counsel, Robin would love to marry Arya Stark. So now that Sansa got what she wanted, she got the marriage proposal between Robin and Arya, she then sentences Littlefinger to death. And Arya ends up carrying out this death penalty with Littlefinger's own Valyrian steel dagger. And after this, Sansa will tell Arya that she should keep this dagger. And she tells Arya that all blades have a name. So Arya ends up naming it Lady in homage to her sister. So this season ends with Sansa getting everything that she wanted and her outplaying Littlefinger. She secured the veil with a marriage between Arya and Robin. And she's also going to use this alliance to try and take over the Riverlands and put Lord Edmure back in power. But the one problem with this deal is that Arya does not know about this marriage proposal. And that conflict is saved for season 8. But that is it everybody for my predictions. Please let me know what you think in the comments section down below. There are more prediction videos to come, but until next time, I'll see you guys later.